I got five ways for you to actually work out even when you really don't feel like it today. Number one is actually when you're already at the gym and you're doing the exercise either by yourself or with a trainer, but in between sets or in between exercise, you do this right here. You sit down in between sets. If you sit down in between sets, 99 out of 100 times, you're going to make your trainer a little bit agitated and he or she might say some things that will get him or her canceled. And number two is somewhat of a controversial topic, but it is to take caffeine pre-workout. If you are able to operate daily with absolutely zero caffeine, then good on you. That is most likely the best way to do it because no matter how you put it, caffeine is a fake source of energy, right? If you are going to take pre-workout, feel no shame because when you take caffeine pre-workout, not only does it give you a mental kick in the butt, it gets you physically ready. It also actually warms up your joints and increases the circulation. So it actually primes your body for exercise. The problem is that the supplement industry is a billion dollar industry. And the reason that's a problem is because there are a plethora of supplements that are vying for your attention and they will put things on their products that just <sighs> promise the world. But in reality, here's something you need to know about pre-workout specifically. Almost all pre-workouts are the exact same thing. The only difference is really the more natural oriented pre-workout versus the pre-workouts that are geared towards either meatheads slash teenagers slash people that have no idea and they're full of artificial sweeteners, chemicals, and just stuff you really shouldn't be putting in your body. So if you do choose to do take caffeine pre-workout, um, I would recommend starting 100, 150 milligrams at first, check your tolerance. Everybody needs to take caffeine at a different time pre-workout. Some take it right when the workout starts, some take it a half hour before. It really kind of depends on your digestion. Number three is to do some good old fashioned Jump rope. If you're not feeling like working out, a lot of times it's because you're maybe a little bit too sedentary that day. Let's say you had a long work day behind you or you woke up and you're just not really feeling like it, but you already know that after you're done with your workout, you will feel like a million dollars. So how do you get through that little breakthrough? A lot of times, literally just hyping yourself up, hyping yourself up. Now what better way to do that than to do some jump rope real quick. Once your heart rate goes up, your body releases all these feel good chemicals and you're never gonna quit a workout after your first set. Cause then you're already doing it, you're starting to feel good and then you got that momentum. Number four is a combination of multiple things. One is if you don't feel like working out, read your reason why that you have written down on your fridge. You got your vision board, whatever you wanna accomplish in life, look at that because that's gonna be your motivation. Two is to look at Rocky Balboa right here. Whatever movie, except for part five, because that one sucked. But if this doesn't hype you up, then, then you have no emotions. Three, the third, part, the third part of part four is to literally grab some water and just put it in your face. All right, now the fifth one is very important. If you have been working out a couple times in a row this week and you wake up and you do not feel like working out and you feel it's a little bit different, literally sit at the edge of, the bed, of your bed when you wake up and just check your heart rate. Is your heart rate elevated? Is your heart rate going blah, 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 If it's higher than usual, that's sign number one, that maybe your body actually needs a break. Two is to actually test your grip strength. And the best way to do that is to literally go to any kind of pull-up bar. And this is not really anything you could put a number on, but if you feel like you have a weaker grip than usual, like you're just not able to hold on to things, then that is another indication that your body might need some rest. And the third test is to test your jump. So let's say you do a squat jump and you feel like you're just not able to be as explosive as usual, then that might be a sign of you are actually overtraining. Now that overtraining doesn't necessarily mean that you've been training too hard. It can also mean that your recovery, which is more likely the case, hasn't really been on point. Probably got some lousy sleep. Maybe you did get good sleep, but your stupid neighbor's dog started barking in the middle of the night. Or maybe you did get good sleep, but your stress levels at work have been super high. Or maybe your partner has been a little extra emotional these past weeks. Maybe your favorite character in your novella 
all of a sudden died. They killed them off. You have high stress levels and you need to cope with that by maybe taking a day off of working out. Because in the end of the day, remember, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, right? You're never gonna stop working out. So three, four strength training sessions a week, two, three cardio sessions a week, food every single day, maybe some raw, no sugar added, apple pie, little pieces from mother's market. In the weekend, chop it up half, chop a half up, give the other half to your Snuggie, put it in some cottage cheese, maybe, and that's your life.